Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of Northwest Craftsman. Today we're going to be installing the C channels into the brand new conference room table that I'm building for one of my clients. Now the question is why would you need to put C channels into a conference room table? Well that's because you need to keep it dimensionally stable over time. Wood likes to absorb moisture at different temperatures and if you have large fluctuations in temperature and humidity your table can warp and twist and bow and on a multi thousand dollar conference room table you don't want it to do that. Traditionally what you would do on a conference room table or on a table in general is you would put breadboards on the end which is one piece of wood going the opposite direction which helps to stabilize the table. My conference room table has breadboards but I also wanted to include the C channels just to make sure that there was some extra structural integrity. Now on this conference room table we're also going to be co covering it with epoxy which means that we may not actually need the C channels but again for an expensive table like this I really wanted to make sure that it was rock solid stable and nothing was ever going to happen to it so we're going to get some C channels in there. So the first thing that I need to do is get these C channels out so that I can space them out on the table and mark where I need to drill them. Now there's two different ways you can do the C channels. One is with the C facing up and so you literally just mount it straight down to the table or you can do the C facing down and embed it so that you get an ultra flat look. I really wanted to make sure that it was even with the bottom of the table so that you couldn't see them. So I'm gonna be mounting them facing down. But that means that we need to carve out a section of the table so that we can mount those in. If you're wondering where I get my C channels from, I get mine from Bidwell and Iron. I had them recommended to me by another channel and um, we're about to unbox them for the first time and see how they look. The benefit to these because they're intended for tables and woodworking is that they already come powder coated so they look nice and they don't rust at all. And then they also come with slots so that you can put your threaded inserts and your bolts in um, and it gives it room to wiggle. If you're not epoxy coating your table, you are expecting expansion to happen and you wanna give room for those to slide along the C channels but without warping up and down. All right, let's tear into these. They said a Tootsie Pop, that's awesome. The other benefit to buying from Bidwell is that they have these pre-made Rampa packs. Rampa are just fancy threaded inserts that have really nice sharp cut grooves to make it easier to go into hardwoods. Um, and then the bolts themselves are a lot nicer because they are exactly the right length for the threaded inserts and they've got a flat top so they sit nice and flush. Okay, now that I got that texture all in my mouth, let's go ahead and get this unwrapped so that I can space these out on the table. You know, Kyle, let me tell you, my initial impressions, sorry, it's like, mm, 50 pop is great. I haven't had one of those since I was like 10. Initial impressions are, these things are incredible. I mean, the build quality in these things is just awesome. Looking at the powder coating that's on them, they are super, super smooth, but also just, they look really nice. I almost wouldn't feel bad leaving these exposed so that you can see them because they are so beautiful. So if this is something that you, you guys are worried about, that's awesome. Also, um, they sent me a sticker and they had a little nice personal note on the uh, receipt that I got. I'm growing to like these guys more and more. But anyways, so now what I need to do is I'm gonna measure it from the end and then I am going to measure to the center and I'm basically gonna try and split them out one third, one third, and one half. Because I've got the breadboards in the end, I'm not worried about placing these right close to the end so I'm fine putting them kind of in the one third mark. Now, I do have to be cautious though because right about here in the middle, I'm gonna be having an electronics pass through so I need to make sure that this does not go into the area where the electronics pass through is. But overall, it's literally just measuring. So I'm gonna space them out exactly the distance that I need so that we can see where they need to go. Alrighty, I was thinking about it a little bit more. And as I was spacing it out, I remembered who referred me to build Bidwell in iron. And that is Walker Woodworks, who is also the one who taught me this particular process. I mean, not me individually, he had a video on it. Um, you can find the link to that video in the description. Um, this is pretty close, if not exactly the process that he used. Um, I don't claim any credit for coming up with any of this information here. I'm just kind of adapting it to whatever situation I'm in. But now that I have all of these spaced out, I'm gonna go ahead and mark down the edges and the stopping points. So basically just hold these in place, run a pencil down the edge, use my Tootsie Roll again, run my pencil down along the edge, run it along the end so I know where to stop. And I'm gonna do that for all of them because that's going to give me the mark that I need for routing this out. 
Alrighty, and then with those marks in place, now what I'm going to do is take a 3 8 inch spiral bit and go down each one of the edges right here to the depth of these so that the backside of this, so backside of the C-channel sits flush with the surface. Cut those guys out and then I'm going to hog out a little bit of the center using a separate bit or the same bit. I still need to decide which one I want to use, but hog out a little bit of the center so that this can sit lower um, in it. Going to do that for all three of them and just quickly time lapse you guys through that so that you can see that process because it's just routing. So a bit of an audible I'm calling here. I am not gonna worry about hogging out any of the center portion of this because this fits amazingly. And when I look at it from the side, it is so low profile as it is, I am not worried about it showing or being obvious or being obtrusive, especially with how good this looks. So off camera, I'm gonna go ahead and finish up these two guys, but the next step in the process is gonna be to mark every other one of these through here. You can do every one if you want. I'm going to do every other one um, and then insert the ramp of hardware, which I'll get into in just a second. Bidwell was good enough to include directions with these. So in these case, for the uh, ramp -a pack two, for the size that we have, we're gonna be drilling a 3 8 inch hole to a depth of 3 quarters of an inch. I don't wanna go any deeper than 3 quarters of an inch because that's about how deep the channels are on either side and I wanna leave as much of the wood as possible. Um, but just like a regular threaded insert, I'm going to drill that hole and then I'm gonna mix up just a teeny tiny bit of epoxy with just five minute epoxy so that I can mix it on each one or dab it on each one of the inserts and then basically just just use an Allen wrench to fill it all the way across. So super easy. I also have a video on why I use threaded inserts, but this is just one perfect application for threaded inserts. Okay, and then with all the holes drilled, it is time to insert the inserts. Uh, this time I actually called another audible and I'm going to be using a super glue uh, from Starbond rather than epoxy because it is much easier to work with, especially when I'm going to be doing uh, this many holes. I think it's uh, three, six times three, quick math, 18. It's going to be 18 holes, uh, which would be difficult if I was trying to mix up a small batch of epoxy because it sets before that. Plus, I don't really want to dribble epoxy on the back of this because that does tend to happen sometimes. But uh, the way that you insert these is you basically just take the right sized Allen wrench and this case it is a six millimeter so there's going to be a six millimeter put this in and just dribble a little bit of uh, super glue on the outside of that and then tighten it up And then wash and repeat for all of them. The other benefit of using super glue is that it allows me to work with it uh, almost immediately as opposed to needing to wait for the epoxy. Okay, quick break. I needed to uh, introduce you to my son because he's gonna be helping me install all of these threaded inserts. Say hey, James. Okay, let's get back to work. There we go. And with James's help, we were able to get all of them installed all the way across. Um, I will note that it was quite difficult with my M6 or with the six millimeter Allen wrench that I had, so much so that it made me think that I wasn't using the right one. But I think it was actually because when I put the super glue on the very bottom, it started to set up on the threads as I was putting them in. And it doesn't say on the directions that I need to use super glue, I just, or epoxy, I just always have. So, if you guys are using this, just as a heads up, it may be kind of tight, uh, maybe hard on your hands. Um, if you've got one that fits into a drill or driver, that might be uh, a better way to go. But overall, did get them installed and everything looks good. Now the last step is super easy because literally, I'm gonna go to this one just to make sure the super glue isn't set um, or isn't not set. The last step is super easy, you literally, just toss it on like this, throw your fasteners in all the way across and boom, your C channels are good to go. So here's what that would look like. So got my fastener, we got the hole. Whoop, 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 whoop. 
and then just tighten it down. You don't need to go crank it on tight through here because you do want to give it the ability to expand and contract as you're moving through here. So it really just snug all the way down and that should be fine. Well, you guys, thanks for joining me today. My uh, working partner kind of uh, fell asleep on the job. So it is what it is. Um, Anyway, so that's how you install C-channels. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. Um, again, because I'm doing an epoxy table, so I'm coating the entire table in epoxy, I probably don't need to have the C-channels, but I'm putting them in there anyways because in the scheme of things, they weren't that expensive and they do help with the structural integrity of the table. So anyways, um, again, you wanna do it so that you prevent warping. If you've got breadboards, may not need it. If you're fully sealing the table, may not need it, but that's how you're gonna do it if you would like to have C-channels in your table. Anyways, thank you guys tons. Go check out Bidwell Wooden Iron. I've been saying Bidwell Iron, but it's Bidwell Wooden Iron. I've got a link in the description down below. Check out their products. Oh, he's starting to wake up. Uh, check out the products in that link down below to see what you guys can get for your projects. And uh, thank you again to Walker Woodworks for showing me how to build a laminated tabletop, which I supersized in this, into this giant table. So anyways, thank you guys tons. Check out the other videos on building this table and the little tiny minute techniques or little techniques that we were using throughout the course of this process um, or that I was using throughout the course of this process, I guess with this little guy, it's a wee. Um, but anyways, love having you guys around. And if you like the kind of content we're producing, would love a thumbs up on the video and a subscription to the channel. Love seeing our community grow and love all the good questions that I get from you guys. So thank you tons. Have a great one. Go make some sawdust. Bye.